Danny Eckerberger, as I told y'all last week, uh, they went to Lebanon, he and Eileen, and I asked him if he had come up and shared a couple of portions of the story. Now, he could share for a week with us because the time that they spent there was so full. But I asked both of them to come today and share a little bit about what Jesus did and, and the relationships. And there's a reason for the things that they're going to share today because it has to do with what the message is that God has for us from His Word. Thank you both. You have uh, mentioned that you were curious what went on there. And I, real briefly, I want to share a little bit. Uh, this particular ministry has been going on for six years. I got involved three years ago, and then Eileen and I got involved uh, together two years ago. It primarily has been outreach to Syrian refugees. Geographically, Lebanon is north of Israel, and Syria is north of Lebanon. And they've been pouring over that border, trying to avoid the war zone. Uh, Lebanon has about two and a quarter, I'm sorry, four and a quarter million people. And in addition, there's about two and a quarter million Syrians that have come across that border. It's a very difficult situation. But uh, that's the background. I didn't want to just share a few things. Danny and I uh, feel very blessed to have been a part of the effort. The full-time missionary asked that we give special attention to encouraging his diminished staff. There are about half as many as before when we went. We asked the Lord that we might display the unity he provided in his son so that the staff, as well as those we were reaching out to, would know that the Father loves the Son and we are encouraged in the unity as we are in him. He walked, I'm sorry, he worked in abundantly to the point that it was very difficult to leave them. But as we know that He has them in His hands, so we have comfort. These thousands of sisters, as well as their daughters, sons, and hopefully their husbands, will now carry this message of love and hope to all who will listen. Praise God through His Lord Jesus Christ. This is a, a difficult mission trip to be on. Uh, their lifestyle is a little bit different than ours. Uh, let me mention this. They don't really have a concept of a cowboy church. They understood cowboy and they understood church, but uh, it was a little bit of a difficult concept for them to embrace. But we try to give a good representation of you guys. Um, my role primarily was construction related. Uh, three years ago, uh, basically I built shelves and, and, and uh, provided places for storage for a, a fledgling building project. The next year we expanded into a classroom uh, on the second floor and this year we've, we've made the uh, attempts at preparing uh, housing for ones that would become like us uh, would be coming uh, later on to serve. Uh, I want to mention just a couple of things. <clears throat> I've been in construction now for about 40 years. In Texas it's hard not to have acquired a vocabulary of Spanish. I'm dealing with Arabs uh, in Lebanon, and uh, by rote and almost automatically, if I can't communicate what it is I need done in English, I immediately go to Spanish. That didn't go off that well in, in Lebanon. They looked at me like this crazy American, and it was humorous, it, it came automatically, so I didn't have difficulty with it. And then the next year, the same thing happened, but uh, somebody from the back of the room spoke back to me in Spanish. And it turned out that uh, Sayed and I spent a lot of time communicating in Spanish in the Arab culture. And it was, uh, it was a noteworthy uh, relationship that we built up. I saw <clears throat> two years ago uh, a brother, a mature brother, sharing the gospel with Sayed. And uh, he wasn't responsive at that point. And, uh, I was disappointed, but it was a good relationship, and I hope to build again. When we went this year, I saw Sayed briefly, visited with his wife and his four children, and uh, and hopes to have another chance to to visit more seriously about gospel matters. One of the things that I learned at this time, perhaps uh, I perceived at this time, it's uh, I'm not sure the clarity of it, but I am sure that the Lord opened some things up for my understanding. The Arab culture, and Islam in particular, has a concept of God. They call him Allah. 
And this God is far greater and can be so un in, in, put us in, in such an unimportant role. They have a picture concept and I'll describe it to you. God's throne is supported by columns. A column is almost impossible to reach around. It, uh, uh, one account I was made aware of is on the column there are repeated words glorifying God and it's never repeated. Not, not the same phrase. This column is too far to reach around, to walk around. It's too high to see the top. And it's only one of an innumerable amount of columns that are separated by 3,000 miles. Now that gave me a concept of the majesty of God. And it helped me to understand their perspective. Because you see, the Muslim has no concept that God can be personal. A Muslim can practice, be obedient, uh, go to great extremes to, to be pleasing to Allah. And yet there is no hope that that same God would condemn him to eternal destruction. No hope whatsoever. It is a, it is a religion of fear as opposed to Judaism, the religion of law and Christianity, the religion of love. But these are things that help me to understand a little bit. You see, as Christians, we understand the majesty of God, but we also have the hope, because of Christ, that it is personal. He knows each one of us. He knows our troubles, our difficulties. He's experienced everything that is tempting to you and I, He has experienced. He died to provide the sacrifice for sin, that each of us enjoy for salvation. This is a concept that my friend Sayed was told about. And this last time, <clears throat> the women and some of the, the uh, volunteers would go into home visits. And this time, we, we were preparing to leave Tuesday a week ago. <clears throat> and uh, Sayed got a home visit. It was supposed to be about 15 minutes, but a young man named Anthony and two of the sisters went to visit him. And it turned out to be about a three or two hour meeting. And once again, the gospel was shared with Sayed. And he, he responded in this way. It was difficult for his family to, to accept something like that. Perhaps he would wait till the weekend. This was Tuesday. Perhaps I'll do that this weekend. And we went to Beirut that uh, next morning, spent the day there, saw some other staging situations designed to help the, the Syrian refugee and, and to get the gospel to as many as possible. And then Wednesday evening we relaxed and it was our last night in Lebanon. We, we had a good meal at a nice restaurant and uh, got a phone call uh, that uh, uh, was a little bit disturbing and it was passed down the line and the table to me said that uh, Syed had had a massive heart attack that day. He's a mason. He, works outside, very strenuous. But Sayed died. It was a difficulty. I reflected back the opportunities that he had had. And it's, it's sad, but it's the truth. It's the truth that you and I face. So that's, uh, that's the way our, our trip ended this time. But we look forward to, to serving God in that, in that manner. If you have other questions, be sure and get with us. But, uh, the Lord is, is having a great effect on the Islamic nation that, uh, that pours over that border into uh, what they don't, don't expect and don't understand, but Christ is about to introduce Himself to them many times in many places. So be encouraged.